video, we're going to be talking about what is astigmatism? What does it mean when you see all those numbers on your prescription? How does it affect your vision? And what are the treatment options? So let's go. board certified ophthalmologist and I specialize in pediatric ophthalmology, which means I'm often the first person to tell a patient that they have astigmatism. And usually it sounds so scary. And sometimes I even have patients that come to me, adults and kids alike, that say, I have a stigmatism. And they, the way they say it, it's like it's a scary disease. Well, first, it is not. That is the most important thing that you can know. It is not a disease of the eye. It's just the way that your eye is shaped and the way that the light is reflected onto your retina. That is it. It just signifies the type of glasses or contact lenses that you need so that you can see well. So be rest assured that it's not something really dangerous if you're coming to this video because you don't even know what it is. It's not something dangerous. It's simply the shape of your eye. So what exactly is astigmatism? and there is corneal astigmatism, which is really the most common type, and lenticular astigmatism, which I'll talk about for a little bit, but it really doesn't have much to do with anything. So first, what's the cornea? The cornea is the clear dome-shaped covering of the front surface of your eye. I'm not a cornea specialist. I told you I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist, but my husband is a cornea specialist, so he loves the cornea. In some people that don't have astigmatism, the cornea is perfectly round, like you cut the top of a basketball off or a sphere. Now, in people with astigmatism, it just means that the cornea is a little bit oblong in nature. I don't want to say misshapen because that makes it feel like it's being squished to one side, and sometimes it can be, but it's really just more like you cut the top of an egg or a football off. And that's how light is getting reflected inside your eye that the peripheral rays are not being focused right where they need to be on the centermost aspect of your retina. Instead, they're being kind of spread apart. And the type of lens that we need to fix that is a cylindrical lens. So oftentimes when you look at your prescription, you'll be able to tell if you have astigmatism. First, there's the sphere. I'm gonna show you right there. That's that number right there. It'll have a minus if you are nearsighted. It'll have a plus if you are farsighted or hyperopic. That second number is the cylinder. That is the number if you have astigmatism. And we refer to everything in diopters. That's just our unit of measurement. Go back to your high school physics. You'll remember that diopters is one over the focal length of a lens or a mirror. So it's our unit of measurement for anything having to do with glasses or contact lenses. If you have a number in this box right here for cylinder, that means you have some astigmatism. And then the third number is axis. If you have astigmatism, you're gonna have a number here too. And I'll explain that in a second. If you don't have any astigmatism, that's going to be blank. So let's get back to the cornea. That is what has more of an oblong shape. So think about it, like an egg or a football. It can be an egg that's pointed up and down or an egg that's going horizontal. And that really depends on the type of astigmatism you have. Where is the cornea steeper? Is it steeper in the vertical axis or is it steeper in the horizontal axis? Now I'm asking you to go back to high school geometry for this. So most of my pediatric patients, if they have astigmatism, they have something called with the rule astigmatism. What that means is that their steepest axis is in the vertical meridian. And you'll often see that written in the glasses prescription as an axis of 180 if they're using the minus cylinder notation. Now, as we age, the thought is that your eyelid is starting to apply pressure onto the cornea and it starts to misshapen it just a little bit, making the horizontal axis a little bit steeper. That's called against the rule astigmatism. And if your eye doctor writes their prescription with a minus cylinder, that's going to be axis 90. So that's the two different types of astigmatism that we typically see in kids versus adults. All right, so what exactly does that mean? So there are a lot of different ways that we measure astigmatism. 
There are fancy old school technologies. This one's called a keratometer. And with a keratometer, you're looking at the centermost three millimeters of the cornea and measuring which part is the steepest. And again, we put everything in diopters. But I don't use the keratometer anymore. My husband, the cornea specialist, certainly doesn't use the keratometer very much anymore. Instead, we have the brand new technology. We've got all these digital type photographic machines. And what they can do is measure in a broader range, the actual steepness of the cornea. And we get this really beautiful color coded map. We call it a topography because it's like, a, you know, like your geographic maps where you can see the topographic, you know, the mountains and the valleys. That's what we're basically looking at in the cornea. And red is the hot spot. That means that's the area where things are steepest. Blues and greens are cooler. So that means those are areas where things are flatter. When we're looking at the topography of the cornea, then we can see where your astigmatism is most, which axis, which meridian is your astigmatism. And that's going to help us decide how to treat it. Going back to your high school geometry, depending on where your cornea is most steep, that's the kind of glasses we need to combat it. So when we give you a prescription for glasses, we're taking into account where your cornea is most steep, and then we are overcoming that by giving you glasses in the opposite so that you can see better. And they are a cylinder lens because everything is really spread out when you have astigmatism. I like to say it's like looking through a funhouse mirror and depending on how much astigmatism you have, it can be, make things really tall and skinny, or it can make things really short and fat. That's how things look for someone with astigmatism. That's really different than someone that's just nearsighted where everything is blurry far away or for someone that's farsighted where things are blurry up close. Astigmatism affects both your near and distance objects. So everything is blurry. It's just all stretched and elongated in really unusual ways. What's another type of treatment modality for astigmatism? Well, contact lenses are actually possible. And now even in soft contact lenses, they are called toric contact lenses. And it's really pretty amazing because 30 or 40 years ago, we didn't have this. Everybody had to wear a hard contact lens or a rigid gas permeable lens if you had astigmatism. But now we even have daily disposable soft contact lenses to combat astigmatism. And the slight difference that you'll see with these kind of contact lenses, they have a little hatch mark. And when you're looking at them really, really closely, you can see that they are weighted in a particular orientation. And that's, again, to offset where your cornea is steeper. When you blink, that's what we're looking for when I examine you in the office, is to make sure that the contact lens is well-centered on your eye, but it's in the correct orientation. It's in the proper place because if you have astigmatism in one axis, you need the astigmatism contact lens to be in the appropriate axis to combat it. Otherwise, it's just going to make your astigmatism worse. And we certainly don't want that. Now, there are some types of corneal disorders which are characterized by irregular astigmatism. The kind of garden variety regular astigmatism, it doesn't necessarily matter how much astigmatism you have. But if I notice a patient has a large amount of astigmatism and I do a topography and I see a bow tie or a different shape pattern as opposed to just the bullseye, then I know that this patient has irregular astigmatism. That can be characteristic of things like keratoconus or pellucid marginal dis, uh, degeneration. These are patients I then refer promptly over to my husband, the cornea specialist, because they're going to require different treatments. Oftentimes they might require a larger type contact lens to get the best possible vision. You might need something called a scleral or a Jupiter lens, or some of these patients do require a rigid gas or hard contact lens. There are even types of corneal transplants for worst case situations where the vision has really deteriorated. So that's kind of a different type of astigmatism. That's a more advanced type of astigmatism. For keratoconus, we also have collagen cross-linking preventative measures. And if you're interested in learning more about that, drop that in a comment below and I can totally make a completely separate video on keratoconus or collagen cross-linking because it's really interesting what we can do now for our youngest patients with those disorders. 
refractive surgery is also an option for treating astigmatism. Both LASIK and PRK can treat astigmatism up to five to six diopters of such. And PRK, I think a little bit more so. So these are all options in the past that we didn't have, but we can do now with glasses, contact lenses, refractive surgery, and even refractive cataract surgery. So in the past, when you were older and you had cataract surgery, we take the natural lens of the eye out. As an ophthalmologist, this is one of the surgeries that I do. We take the natural lens out and we put in an artificial lens. But the nice thing is now with cataract surgery, it's another way that we can combat astigmatism. When it's time for your cataract surgery, there are now toric intraocular lenses that we can place in at the time of surgery to take care of your astigmatism, which is really pretty awesome. So it works kind of similar to a toric contact lens where one side of the lens is weighted a little bit more with the cylindrical power to focus the light rays better onto the retina. So the bottom line is astigmatism, especially if it's regular astigmatism, if it's a type of astigmatism that's pretty mild in number and is not indicative of a corneal disorder, Regular astigmatism is not a disease that's to be feared, something that we can totally handle and treat with glasses or contact lenses or surgery down the road should you desire. All right, guys, let me know if that was helpful for you. Drop in the comments below if you have any other topics you wish to know about, if you wanna know more about the corneal disorders or more about how to read a glasses prescription. I can do any of those for you. So drop in the comments below. And until the next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.